elementary students. We're in section five, three. We just came out of a super, um, really hard section about circumcenter and in center. And I'm going to do it again to you. Got two more. These are so easy to mix up and we've got to keep them straight. We've got to memorize these relationships so they make sense to us. So I'm going to kind of go back a little bit, draw in the circumcenter and the in center as we talk about this new theorem. Okay, right here at the top, we talk about a median of a triangle. Now that is very simply a segment whose endpoints are, they start, starts at a vertex, and then it ends up on the midpoint on the opposite side of that vertex. So as you look at this triangle, you're looking at this endpoint C, that's a vertex of your triangle, and it's going to land right here in the middle of AB. AB is the side that is opposite of point C. And so when you connect C to this point on the other side, D, that forms a segment called the median, the median. Every triangle has three medians. The medians are going to crisscross. They are concurrent. They're going to crisscross and form something called the centroid, the centroid. Okay, and the centroid is always inside the triangle. Go ahead and underline that. We call this the center of gravity. And artists use this all the time. Like at the top of your page there on page 314 in your book, there's a picture of a mobile. I don't know if you remember having a mobile as a child, um, but this type of, this is actually a sculpture that's very balanced. And they, they use mobiles with, of moving objects. It's really pretty neat uh, that there are, are artists out there that that's their job. They use medians and centroids all the time, which is really, really cool. And so that's why they call it the center of gravity because they're able to balance at a particular point. They're able to balance a structure and that structure still is moving. That's the mobile, but um, it's balanced and it's got a center of gravity. You should probably, you might want to do a little search, a Google search, and see if you can find some pretty cool sculptures that are out there. So let's get to our centroid theorem. So then we're going to add this to our electronic notebook. Um, we've already done circumcenter and in center, and then we still have somewhat of the word center to it as well, centroid theorem. Now, the centroid of a triangle is located two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. That probably did not make a lot of sense. So remember, let me just take, for example, um, CX, okay? So I'm highlighting right here, CX. That is a median. Centroids have everything to do with medians, okay? Um, where all three medians intersect, that's your centroid, okay? That's the centroid of the triangle, always inside, just like in centers are always inside. Centroids are always inside. And it doesn't, it's going to split CX up into two pieces. The larger piece, PC or CP, is um, two-thirds the length of the whole thing CX. That's what I'm pointing out to right here. CP is the larger of the two segments subdivided by that centroid. Okay? CP is two-thirds of the whole thing, C to X. Okay? AP is two-thirds of the whole thing, A, Y. And then BP is two-thirds of BZ. Okay, that's what I was trying to point out here, here, and of course here. So the number two-thirds is going to play a big part of the centroid. Centroids don't split those medians in half. Um, but they split them into two pieces. You have one piece that's a third of the whole thing, and the other piece is two-thirds of the whole thing, So, which is really, really interesting. So when you roll it back and we talk about circumcenter, you know, circumcenter 
think about, oh, that's the intersection of your perpendicular bisectors. Okay? That's what we remember about circumcenters. And then we talked about end centers. And end centers, those are your angle bisectors. Okay, that's what, when you have all three of your angle bisectors intersect, that form, that point of intersection is known as your end center. And when all three of your perpendicular bisectors intersect, then that forms a point called the circumcenter. And then you get to this section, the centroid, when all three medians intersect, then that point of intersection is called the centroid of that triangle. And so um, hopefully I did a good job explaining that and trying to keep these other theorems fresh in your mind. Like how are they the same and how are they different? Okay, let's look to the next page. Now we're gonna apply the centroid theorem to find some segment lengths. We're gonna use some algebra to figure this out. In triangle ABC, AF, so that, that's the, this whole segment, AF, that's the whole median. AF is a median. That whole thing is nine units, whatever the unit is. And we know that GE, now that's the small piece of CE. GE is the smaller of the two pieces that form CE. Okay, remember we talked just a second ago about the smaller piece is a third of the whole, and the larger piece is two-thirds of the whole. Okay, so that's going to come back into play, so I want you to keep thinking about that. All right, and they want us to figure out in letter A what AG, so from the centroid all the way out to one of the vertices there. Well, that's the larger of the two pieces. AG is the two-thirds, that's the larger piece. GF is the one-third piece. Okay, so when you set this up, you go, okay, well, AG is going to be two-thirds of the whole median, and the whole median is AF. Well, we know what the length of AF is, so we literally can take two-thirds of nine, and two-thirds of nine is six, so we know that AG has a length of six. Okay, I'm going to let you digest that for a second and finish up your writing. Now CE, what this time they want us, we're going to work backwards just a little bit, we're looking to find the entire median. So in letter A, they gave us the whole median and said, okay, find this piece of the median. Um, CE is this time we're trying to find that whole median. We're trying to figure out well, what's the length of that whole thing if we know one tiny little piece of it, okay? So this is what we know. We know that GE is one-third the size, because that's the smaller piece. GE is one-third the size of the median CE, okay? Well, they gave us GE. They said, well, GE is 2.4. So one third of what is 2.4? So really all we're down to is we've just got to figure out how to get one third over to the other side so we can figure out the length of CE. So the easiest thing to do is multiply by the reciprocal. And when you multiply each side by three, you're going to end up with 2.4 times 3, and that's going to end up giving you 7.2. And that's the length of that entire median CE. CE is the median, and, and we needed to find the big piece. Okay, the big, the whole thing. All right, so I just showed you how to do, how to find the two-thirds section of a median and then I showed you how to take the one-third section of a median to find the length of the actual median. So hopefully you like a little bit of a shortcut there. The book shows it a little bit differently, but I, I thought you guys would probably appreciate a little bit of a shortcut there. So I'm going to leave a check it out to you. And you guys are going to do 1A and 1B. You've got some information you need to 
look at in order to solve this, and I'm going to make this a plus two, and we'll check this in class tomorrow. Thanks for listening.